Hey everyone, this is Chris, continuing my series on the Reaper MIDI controller control surface project that I spent most of 2019 on. Um, in this video, this is the Behringer X-Touch Mini. Uh, I'll show you how all the encoders are assigned. Basically, the first one is jog by measure left or right, um, as you can see. Um, this last encoder is also jog by measure left or right for right-handed people. I'm lefty, so I like it over here. Um, this is track scroll up and down, or you know previous next track. Uh, this is unassigned still. Uh, this is semitone transpose for a selected item in that track. Uh, I'll demonstrate all that. This is zoom vertically. This is zoom horizontally. All right, self self explanatory. Uh, this is track scroll for right-handed people. So it's like a mirror image of the other stuff, and then again, you know, jog left and right. Uh, this is also previous or next track for you know the people who prefer the to push the buttons. Um, also really handy in the Media Explorer, you could do previous and next file, just like I think you can do this. Uh, no, 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 you can't use the encoder in the Media Explorer. You can with uh, machine all the machine controllers, but um, for the Media Explorer, uh, previous next. Uh, file when you're um, auditioning loops and stuff like that you could use these and it's really helpful ME just basically means you know media explorer or browser you know so it just opens and closes the um, media explorer transport obviously it's self-explanatory record play stop stop uh, loop on and off uh, this is previous or next marker so if you have a bunch of markers in there um, you know, you can you can just bounce between them for like verse, chorus, all that stuff. Uh, this is the volume of the selected track, um, and this is just layer A, by the way. Uh, layer B, I'll do another video. I think it's mostly MIDI learn stuff. Um, this button is undo. Uh, this is set time selection start, set time selection end. I'll demonstrate all that. Uh, toggle windows, focus windows um, for you know if you want to see like a plugins parameters and it's like hiding behind something else you could just like it like cycles through all the windows that you can see uh, quantize quick quantize of a MIDI item when you record it and record arm for the selected track so uh, oh, also each of these has a button function so this one right here is select item on the selected track duplicate item split item glue item um, trim right edge really handy when you want to extend loops or shorten them. Uh, cycle FX in the plugin window. That basically means if you have like a plugin instrument and then after it, like maybe a couple effects like a delay or a reverb, you can cycle through those again without a mouse. I'll, I'll demonstrate. And then this, uh, when you push this encoder, it's, it's a show or hide FX chain on the selected track, which is uh, demonstrated in the part three video. Um, and the part two video, which covers a lot of the machine mark three stuff. And right here, um, when you push this encoder, you insert marker at the current position. So basically I'll just show you what I'm doing. You could obviously see what my hands are doing. So push the button. Whoops. That didn't work. Why is that? Is that set to duplicate? Yeah. I think I already, uh, messed up this map cause I changed the, the Reaper actions, uh, bindings. Uh, compared to what it was before. Uh, so let's see. Hang on one second. Let me go to the actions list. See what that is assigned to. It says insert marker current position. Yes. And I don't know why it duplicated an item. I have no idea. All right. Let's see. So let's try this again. Okay. There we go. There's the marker. I don't know why it did that before. Maybe I hit the wrong thing. Who knows? All right. There we go. So I'm basically just inserting markers randomly, you know, number five. Then I'm just undoing what I just did. Uh, so track scroll. So here is the FX chain toggle. You know, so basically that's the Tal Uno LX2 showing and hiding. And then this one right here has two effects on it. It, ha it has the free Tal Noisemaker and it also has the free Valhalla uh, Supermassive. So with this, again, when you push this encoder, you can cycle FX. So you can tweak the parameters of that, tweak the parameter of that. When you're done, you could just click that one and you hide it, you know, really handy. Um, and let's see, trim. 
So we have uh, this track is now selected. It's like basically a drum loop. So this trim right edge is this encoder. So you can basically make the loop as long or as short as you want. Very handy. And uh, let's see, glue is obviously self-explanatory. You glue an item. Uh, if you want to split an item into a bunch of pieces, you can split, right? Um, if you want to select the item, you just do the jog wheel and you push down, you know, like wherever you want to select something. Um, let's see what else. Oh, all right, let's see. So here's set and set a time selection start and end point. So let's say measure 11 to 19. And as soon as you set the endpoint, it actually jumps back to the time selection. It's a custom Reaper action I made. So any time selection you make, it just jumps right back. It's really helpful. You know. And toggle windows is basically just, uh, you know, whatever windows were open before. Uh, I think I got to remap that. But uh, what that does is show the plugin windows. So if there's a plugin on track one and two, it just basically shows both windows at once and then hides them. So any plugin windows that you have on any track, uh, but again, this is not uh, mapped correctly. I have to re redo the um, the editor, uh, the map in the in the editor. So focus, uh, what that does is, so I'm gonna show this, and then I'm gonna show this one. So focus, if it's mapped properly, yeah. It basically just uh, makes the plugin that you want to see in focus. So that so the LX is behind the noisemaker, and now the noisemaker is behind LX. Really handy. And then you know when you want to hide those, you just click FX chain, and then you select that track and hide that one. Um, quantize self-explanatory for MIDI stuff. Arm, you know, so basically you know like here's our track scroll. So I'm arming this track for recording this one and this one, and doing the same. Disarming, uh, set marker. Oh yeah, I did the marker set. Hang on, let's see. So we'll set a marker here. We'll set a marker here. And we'll set a marker here, and this just goes between them. Now, uh, I think I have to tweak that because I think it's set to momentary. Yeah. So if you hold the button and let go, it like jumps. It's it's supposed to be set to toggle because um, you only have a couple different options. Some some stuff or a, pro, a MIDI program change. MIDI mapping is not the easiest thing in the world to do, but once you get it done, it's awesome. But, but you know, again, this is set to momentary, so it's like as soon as I let go, it's jumping to like a different marker. Got to fix that. Um, not a problem. And undo, you know, track previous and next. Just a really quick rundown. Um, and then this is, you know, the volume of any selected track. And what's cool is it's not set to, to jump. It's set to pick up. So basically, once you hit, yeah, once you hit where it was, then you can move it. So it doesn't have like any erratic jumps. It just kind of, you know, it's set to soft takeover is what that's called. Um, and yeah, that's about it for now. You know, uh, zoom vertically, zoom horizontally, and all that good stuff. Oh, the semitone transpose. So uh, I'll, I'll play this, you know, very lame uh, track. So then what I do is I go to, um, you know, uh, like, like I select an item, for instance, uh, I don't know, this keyboard part, and jog over, select, and then I can, I can uh, turn the semitone thing, and it basically raises it and lowers it, depending on if you go counterclockwise or clockwise. Uh, so let, so uh, going back, let's see. So obviously that sounds ridiculous and out of key. Um, and what else? What was it on? I think it was like here. Yeah. So now this is a transposant full octave. Whoops. Um. All right. And then full octave down. Now I notice, uh, you know, like these these tracks are kind of muting as I was playing it. Uh, in my part three video, I was demonstrating how I can do track mutes with uh, the Machine Mark III. So it still has a lot of mute automation, uh, you know, um, envelopes. You know, like like that's why uh, the stuff was muting. Um, I'm doing all of these tutorials and demonstrations basically on the fly, so there's definitely going to be some weird stuff happening here and there. <laughs> but uh, 
it's fun and that's basically the Behringer X-Touch Mini um, very handy controller and you got like a whole other layer if you want to use one but I love these encoders um, and how you can do the push buttons you know it's it's just a really really awesome handy controller very very small um, and it's just great for like you know hands-on hardware feel of Reaper so uh, if you guys like this video please uh, you know give me a thumbs up um, subscribe obviously uh, comment with any questions or concerns or uh, you know requests and I will get back to you right away and uh, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video and basically any and all in this series and uh, I will talk to you soon I'll see you in the next video bye bye